In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the first Sunday of Advent, and the first Sunday of the church liturgical year, so Happy New Year. The reading from Isaiah today longs for God to come down to earth. We can all echo this longing, and as we seek an assurance of God's presence in our world and in our lives, we live in a world which so needs the healing touch of God. Advent is a time when we think of light, but it's an honest season in which we also acknowledge the darkness. Each Sunday, we will be lighting candles. They remind us that we live in times of darkness in which the light of Christ is present with us. The reading from the Gospel of Mark encourages us to watch and pray. This is important for us as we go through this time of preparation for Christmas, a Christmas like no other. Let us seek to create space for the presence of God. Advent is an opportunity to be able to stop and create time to reflect. Doesn't the Advent wreath look wonderful? Thank you, Mary. O oh God, by whose word all things are sanctified, pour forth thy blessing upon this wreath and grant that we who use it may prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ and may we receive from thee abundant graces who lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, light of the world, born in David's city of Bethlehem, born like him to be king, be born in our hearts at Christmas, be king in our lives today. Amen. Amen. People of God, awake. The day is coming soon when you shall see God face to face. Remember the ways and works of God God calls you out of darkness to walk in the light of his coming. You are God's children. Lord, make us one as we walk with Christ today and forever. Amen. Over the next few weeks, I for one am looking forward to singing some amazing Advent carols. Here is the first one. Charles Wesley's Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Alan brings a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Before Paul reads the Gospel, we sing Graham Kendrick's Wake Up, O Sleeper. It may be new to you, but I wager you, like me, will be singing the chorus all day. The first lesson is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 64, beginning at the first verse. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you are angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us into the hand of an iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people.
But in those days, after that distress, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give her light, the stars will come falling from the sky, the celestial powers will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, and he will send out the angels and gather his chosen from the four winds, from the farthest bounds of the earth to the farthest bounds of heaven. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its tender shoots appear and are breaking into leaf, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all that is happening, you may know that the end is near, at the very door. Truly, I tell you, the present generation will live to see it all. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Yet about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor even the Son, no one but the Father. Be on your guard. Keep watch. You do not know when the moment is coming. It's like a man away from home. He has left his house and put his servants in charge, each with his own work to do and he has ordered the doorkeeper to stay away. Keep awake then, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, evening or midnight, cock crow or early dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you asleep. What I say to you, I say to everyone, keep awake. Keep awake. Thank you, Paul. When I was young, one of my favourite films was Mary Poppins, although I think I would have loved anything starring Julie Andrews. At one point in the film, the two Banks children, Jane and Michael, Refuse to go to sleep, so Mary Poppins sings them a lullaby. It's not your usual lullaby, though. For starters, this lullaby is called Stay Awake. As we hear the words, listen to the strange reverse psychology, let me remind you. Go to sleep. No, I don't want to go to sleep. Mary Poppins were much too excited. Very well, suit yourselves. Stay awake, don't rest your head, don't lie down upon your bed, while the moon drifts in the skies, stay in spite of the words that implore them to stay awake. As I'm sure you can predict by the end of the song, in fact, by the beginning of the second verse, Michael is asleep, followed a moment later by Jane. There's a beautiful tension between the words of the song, which say, stay awake, and the music, the melody, which encourages a deep sleep. I have a bit of the same mixed reaction to the words of our gospel. Beware, keep alert, keep awake. These directives seem so intense, so dramatic, that we sometimes want to crawl back into bed, pull the duvet over our head and wait it out. 
there's a beautiful tension here as well. On the one hand, there's a sense of urgency. This generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. And by all these things, Jesus means a sun eclipsed by darkness and a moon without light and the stars falling from heaven. Keep alert. It's all going to happen soon. In the midst of a global pandemic, one might have already wondered if the time had come. Pandemic or not, we're told that we do not know when the time will come. Like those slaves left to watch over the master's household or the bridegroom, we have no clue when he will appear. We don't want to be caught napping when the master arrives. But how long can we seriously be expected to stay awake? At this point, it's been centuries. Surely we're allowed to sleep sometimes. Is it easier for us to say, well, since we don't know what time Jesus is coming, we don't really have to think about it. I think the gospel responds to that with, no, since you don't know when it will happen, we need to think about it all the time. So we say, but it could be a hundred years from now or a thousand or even a million. And the gospel says, but it could also be tonight when the sun goes down in a blaze of orange or when the midnight clock echoes through the quiet rooms of your house or when the first rays of light sneak through your curtains. Beware, keep alert. You do not know when the time will come. By any measure, it's a strange approach to the passing of time, which is why the details of time aren't actually the point. For many of us, time is marked more by relationship than by minutes, weeks or even years. The first Christmas after a baby is born or the first Christmas after a dear one died. The first time we kissed. The last time I saw her. The moment I met him. What drives the drama of today's gospel is not the question of time, when, but the question of relationship, who. Who holds all of heaven and earth in loving hands? Who has the power to turn creation upside down? Who can we turn to in a global pandemic? Who is asking us to stay awake? The answer is, of course, God. We have a God who marks time in terms of relationship rather than a calendar. A God who has known us since before we were born. A God who shapes us like a potter shapes the clay. A God who longs to be in relationship with us so much that God takes on a human form and comes to us in a way we can understand as a baby. A God who promises to come again and transform the world completely. I don't think God is standing over us with a stopwatch, waiting for some predetermined moment. I think God is pleading with us to stop and keep watch, to pause and pay attention to the relationships in our lives. I know that is what many people have done this year, a year when we've not been able to meet in ways we want when communication has been on Zoom or FaceTime or over the phone, when we've learnt to value even more a simple hug or a handshake. This Advent, let us step away from the lists and the worry of shopping and stuff and ask some important questions. How might our relationship reflect more clearly the love that God has first given us. And how might we share that love with a broken world?
to keep awake means that we do not turn away from the world's sufferings. To keep awake means to work on those relationships, maybe in different ways, in our own families, that could use attention. To keep awake means that we respond to the needs of the neighbours around us, as I know this community does very well. Demonstrated in these past few months. And just as we know God does not rest, God does not sleep. Be assured, friends, that God is with us, with you, each and every moment, and watches over you in your going out and your coming in. So, trusting in God's mercy and care, we begin a new liturgical year. Keep awake. Amen. Stay awake. Don't nod. And dream. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Graham, for leading our prayers of intercession this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we meditate on Christ's commandment to love, we pray for the church throughout the world, for justice and peace between nations, for political leaders and all those in authority, for the communities in which we live, for people who are suffering in any way and for all those who are in our minds today. We are grateful Lord for modern methods of technology and communications that enables churches to continue to provide prayer and worship while services cannot be held in church buildings. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer Loving God, help us to respond to the needs of all people with as much love and support as we apply to our own needs. Help us to love you with all our hearts and with all our souls and with all our minds and to love our neighbours as ourselves. We thank you for our families and friends and the technology that enables us to hear and see them so easily and to keep in touch, even though so many are separated by great distances or denied the opportunity because of the restrictions of the pandemic. We pray for students living away at university who are preparing to come home for Christmas. Keep them safe, Lord, in their travels and keep all families safe as and when we meet up with the re relaxation of the restrictions for the Christmas and festive period. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who have little love in their lives, for those who are lonely and afraid, for those who are addicted and trapped, for those who grieve and mourn, for those whose relationships are suffering due to the pressure of these unprecedented times. May the presence of your love in all our lives enable us to appreciate good health, a loving family, food on our table and a purpose in everything we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are sick, especially those who are suffering from long-term illness,
that demands patience to bear. We remember before you those who are lonely and distressed and pray that we may be good listeners. Give us the right words and help us to know what simple acts of kindness may help someone else. Our thoughts are especially with those who have become frail and weak, those whose eyesight is failing, those who find it difficult to hear. We think, we think of the lonely with the mem many memories but few friends to fill their hours in the day. Those who must have things done for them when they wish they could do so much for themselves. Those who are housebound or living in hospitals or care homes. We pray for those who care for them. And we pray for ourselves that we may never ne neglect the opportunity to offer friendship and help. Comfort with your presence those who suffer in mind, body and spirit and give them the courage and the hope they need in their troubles. At the current time and in our own parish we pray for those who are sick. Janet, Ellen, Janet, Evelyn and Ted, Roger and Mary, Janice, Betty, Nafat, Tom, Peter and Anne, Henrietta, Olive, Morris and baby Eric. We remember those who have died in recent times and those whose anniversaries fall at this time. Give strength to those who grieve and help us to share in each other's sorrow. For those who have died recently in our own parish, we remember Kath, Tom and Gillian. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Loving God, as we face this coming week, make us mindful that we should constantly pray for your world, for your people, and to share our love with all those we meet. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our peace hymn is accompanied by new images from some of our church family. If you'd like to share in this way, send me a picture. We would love to see you. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet in the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
as this bread was scattered and then gathered and made one. May your church be gathered into your kingdom. Glory to you, O God, forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation, confident that your promise will be fulfilled. We now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory, and so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory forever and ever, praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread, and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine, and again he praised you, gave it to them and said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. We plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life. Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. Christopher, St. Andrew and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours. O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Looking for the coming of his kingdom, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. God is with us wherever we are. He wants the best for you. As we are not able to come to church just yet, know that we are together as we share a prayer for our spiritual communion. Heavenly Father, as we participate with your people in these holy mysteries, we pray you now to grant your gift of spiritual communion with trust in your faithfulness and your abiding love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do not presume to come to this short table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Saint Andrew, 
and our patronal festival. Please join us here online. There may be incense and there will certainly be a storyteller to accompany your traditional St Andrew's fish supper. And also join me as Chris, our reader, leads us in a special choral evensong for Advent. I can't think of a better start to this very different Advent. With love and compassion. Come, Lord Jesus. With judgment and mercy. Come, Lord Jesus. With what wisdom and truth. Come, Lord Jesus. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you.
scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you, those you love and those who love you, wherever they may be, today and until Jesus comes or calls. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. And rise in glory. As we wait our coming Saviour. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.